In this video, we're going to look at inequalities and absolute values. And specifically, we're going to look at them as they are around zero or in the negative side of things. Because absolute values we know are always going to be positive. The value always comes out to be positive or zero. And so when we look at these, these are kind of special examples. So let's take a look at this first one. We have the absolute value of x is greater than zero. So what we can do, um, we can approach it like any other um, absolute value problem where we have our case one where the inside is positive. And then we have case two where the inside is negative of the absolute values. Okay, so if we let the inside be positive, we have the x is greater than zero. And if we have the inside be negative, we have a negative x is greater than zero. So we need to divide both sides by negative one. When you divide by a negative, it flips our inequality, and zero divided by a negative one is just zero. So as we go to graph this, we have an open circle on zero because it does not include the point zero. It'd have to be equal to. And so we have an open circle, and in this first case, we have that it's greater than zero. So we have an arrow pointing to the right. The second one, we have an open zero, uh, circle on zero, and an arrow pointing to the left. Now we look here at our sign to see if this is an and statement or an or statement. And it's uh, a great or. So it's an or statement. Um, one of my old teachers showed me that. If it's greater, then it's an or statement. If it's less than, then it's less than. Um, so that's just a quick way to remember it. I'll make another video here in a little bit um, explaining why that is, um, but that's just a quick way to remember it. So as we see this, uh, we see that we're looking for um, just the combination of both of them. And so we have everything but zero. So really what, when we talk about this, we have the set of all x where x does not equal zero. So it, it can equal anything else. Okay, let's take a look at another example here um, of the absolute value of x is less than zero. So we could apply this same thing where we say case one, x is less than zero. Case two, negative x is less than zero. So we can graph this first one, x is less than zero. We have an open circle and an arrow pointing to the left. And then here we divide by negative, sorry, negative one. Divide by negative one, x is greater than zero. So then we have what appears to be the same graph, but we notice here that we have a less than, so this is an and statement, meaning we're looking for the overlap, where there is no overlap because it's not including zero. So really we have no solution here or the empty set. So there are no numbers that will make that true. And if you think about it, you can't have an absolute value of a number be less than zero. It has to be zero or greater. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. This is a little bit different in that uh, we have, um, let's do case one. Uh, the inside is positive, so x is great, uh, sorry, less than or equal to zero. In case two, uh, negative x is less than or equal to zero. So this first one we have, we include zero, so we fill that in, and it's less than. And then here, when we divide by negative one, we have x is greater than or equal to zero. So we have a closed circle again with an arrow pointing in the other direction. Now this is still an and statement because it's less than or equal to, um, but it does include this point zero. So we see that we have that x can equal zero. So if we put it in that set builder notation, there's that one instance where this will be true. Um, and then finally, if we look at this one, uh, the absolute value of x is greater than negative one. Um, we could see pretty quickly that um, any absolute value greater than a negative is going to be any number. But let's say we didn't see that. We could say the case one, x is greater than negative one. Case two, negative x is greater than negative one. So we have an open circle on negative one with an arrow pointing to the right. Um, and then here, if we divide both sides by negative one, x is 
less than one because you flip your inequality when you divide by a negative. So you have an open circle on one and an arrow pointing in the opposite direction. Now, since this is a great or, this is an or statement, which means that these overlaps don't matter. Since the negative one is included in the second set, um, then we include that in our solution. So we see then that we have all numbers as a solution.